Hi, I'm Dr. Max, and now let's talk about post-operative instructions. You've had your surgery, hopefully with us, and now you want to know what you can, what you cannot do after your procedure. Hair restoration procedure is an important decision and your adherence to instruction will ensure that you get the most desirable results after the procedure. When we finish the surgery, you will leave with a shower cap on the top of your head to help to protect grafts from the environment as well as to keep some humidity inside the cap. You will also be provided with the spray that you can use every few hours to retain moisture around a grafted area. So what are do's and don'ts? Okay, first of all, every patient is being provided with written instructions and it's important to read them and understand. Initially, when you leave from the clinic, the grafts are being held just by very tiny forces and friction of graft inside the insertion site. As time develops, there is more clotting uh, mechanism and there is more, more forces that hold those grafts inside. So obviously, you have to be very, very careful when you walk around, when you, when you exit the car, enter the car, not to have any trauma to the grafted area because any, any force to the grafted area can dislodge some of those grafts and push them out. Same true when you walking around your house or somewhere. Please watch your surrounding and make sure that you stay on the safe distance between any object. If you're trying to pick something from the floor, try not to do it by bending and uh, hitting something with your hand. Yeah, it's better to use squatting technique when you need to pick it something up. Uh, when you sleep at night, your first night, uh, we recommend using a travel pill, the same pill that uh, used on airlines. It will ensure that your head will remain some distance from the pillow in case you turn during your sleep. It will still, will ha you have some space in between the grafted area top of your head or your crown and the pillow. I do recommend to sleep with at least 30 to 45 degrees for the first three nights. It will help to distribute, if you do develop some swelling, it will help to uh, take it away from the grafted area. We do um, uh, recommend to uh, not to touch your uh, grafted area for at least first five days. After five days, uh, you can wash your hair uh, using a uh, shampoo with normal pH without actually touching the scalp. So you can uh, you mix the shampoo with the warm water and very gently um, you can spill over the top of your head and wash the donor area. With the package after the surgery we do provide a topical antibiotic that should be used only in the donor area or the area that we took the graft from. You never put it on the uh, recipient area where the grafts actually were insert, inserted to. I do recommend to avoid any sternus exercise where your heart rate might be increased over 100 beats per minute. During the first one week, I do want to provide more blood flow to um, the grafted area. When you exercise, you shift your blood flow from your scalp to more essential organs like heart, like brain, muscles that get exercise, and we definitely we want to avoid it for at least seven days. Additionally, sweating is not the best 
uh, thin for those grafts in the first seven days. We are frequently asked when you can get back to work. And of course, it depends what type of work you do. Uh, typically, uh, you can get back to work as early as next day if you work in the office or you do not perform any strong physical activity. Um, I've had medical doctors or surgeons who are able to go back to work the very next day as long as the graft are protected and again you do not work by increasing your heart rate and sweat too much. I do ask to avoid smoking for at least several months. Smoking is really bad for grafts. And I don't want to mention how bad it is for everything else. Smoking is bad for your heart, smoking is bad for your lungs, and for, for your skin, for anything pretty much because there's a lot of toxic substances. Um, additionally, smoke contains carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is very strong gas that actually has much higher affinity to um, than oxygen to those red blood cells hemoglobin molecules. If you do smoke, your oxygen delivery decreases significantly and it's in it's a big no after the procedure. I always warn how important it is not to smoke. Again, you hurt it much more everything else with the smoking. But if you decide to invest into hair restoration, please make sure you quit smoking. Same thing about nicotine. Nicotine um, patches the way the substance of nicotine works. It's a vasoconstrictor. That means that it uh, decreases the clearance of those blood vessels, these constricted blood vessels. As a result, it decreases the blood flow to any area. Even after you use it, so nicotine patch is not a good option. It will hurt, will harm your graft, and you're not gonna get as good of the results. Same thing about uh, weed smoke. Marijuana will, as a smoke, will contain same carbon monoxide that will displace oxygen from RBCs, from red blood cells, and decrease the delivery to your graft. So no, no weed smoking. Talking about oxygen delivery, we do advise to have at least one hyperbaric treatment after the surgery because it is important to deliver as much oxygen as possible to the uh, recently transplanted uh, grafts. Hyperbaric treatment increases oxygen delivery by a huge amount. The way it works, you basically you go into the uh, clear glass chamber and you stay for about an hour, a little bit longer inside that chamber. While you're there, you breathe 100% oxygen at at least two atmospheric pressure. The physics behind it uh, relate, relating to what we call the partial gas pressure. The gas partial pressure or solubility of any gas increases with increase of the ambient pressure. The same way happens with oxygen. When you breathe a lot of oxygen and the pressure uh, uh, with the increased atmospheric pressure, you deliver much more of the oxygen to your tissues. So uh, all the instructions are being provided to every patient right after the procedure. Uh, to make sure that we have understand to answer the questions uh, before we finish each procedure, we read over instructions to make sure that all everything is clear and we're able to answer any, uh, any questions uh, prior to patient leaving the clinic. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us, 954-945-2909. Um, you can visit our website and send an email or a message uh, at bringbackhair.com.